The Canadian men's national team has landed in Curacao ahead of their two matches in this CONCACAF Nations League window, Saturday at Curacao, then of course Tuesday at home at BMO Field against Honduras as they try to book their ticket in the CONCACAF Nations League finals as well as the Gold Cup. And in preparation for those matches, it is a delight to be joined by Canadian defender Stephen Vittoria. Stephen, thank you so much for joining us. Hope everything is well down in Curacao. Hello, uh, it's an honor and a pleasure as always. Um, happy to be back with the guys once again and, and to have the chance to speak to you guys as well. Lots of ground to cover. That's a big task that I'm trying to put on myself here, Stephen. But let's begin with, with you right now, where you are in your career with this team. I mean, it's, we're going on a decade, going back to 2016, you think, when you really broke out with Benito Floro, um, nearing 40 caps, and you have that incredible World Cup experience that I think so many Canadians and so many players in and around this team have been dreaming of for, for such a long time. When you think about 2022, though, in particular, Stephen, and the year it was qualifying to get to Qatar, then the actual World Cup, what are some of the memories that, that stick out to you about that year? Oh, there's, there's so many. Uh, it's been quite a journey, um, not just for me personally, but I truly believe for our country uh, to see how things have transformed especially over that qualifying to see how our country has come together with the whole excitement. Uh, it was already, it, you know, that excitement was already installed uh, based on 2026, but uh, to have this road to Qatar happen, uh, we genuinely feel um, that honor to, to see our country come together with this and, and pave the way for, for those young generations. Uh, there's so much, uh, there was so much growth, uh, so much we all went through. Um, you know, we, we know exactly where we stand. Uh, it's been amazing, but uh, we're far from far from done. Um, really glad we got that experience. Um, now speaking a little bit about the World Cup, uh, I have no doubt in my mind that the national team comes out of that World Cup a lot stronger than what it went in. Um, and now we, we know where we stand, and now we just want to build even more and, and attach wins to, to what we've been building. Um, and we want to start now with, with the Nations League and then... Uh, and then Gold Cup as well. When the announcement was made or when talks started to come out that there was a genuine possibility that the World Cup would land in 2026 in North America and that Canada could play a big part, I think that fast-forwarded for a lot of people. Expectations, plans, excitement on, on what that could look like, despite it being so far away. But there was still Qatar to qualify for. There's And then the pandemic, of course, Stephen. So you have your typical hex, hexagonal format in CONCACAF that goes out the window. Canada may not qualify. All of a sudden, Canada could maybe get to the OCT, but they're going to have to go through the hard way through CONCACAF. When that format was finally unveiled and, and everyone was able to go, okay, this is what we have to do, realistically what what was the mindset in that room like because we, we hear so much about brotherhood and the belief in this group but it was it still a long shot to you guys to get to Qatar when when all of that was laid in front of you I'm not gonna lie um, of course uh, I remember like when that blueprint was laid out there was just so many matches uh, and we knew that if we had that one bad result it can all end even be, before the dream starts uh, so we knew about what we were going to face, but at the same time, as difficult as it was, uh, that's something that the staff has done uh, since the get-go, is build that seed in our, in our minds, our mentalities, that uh, it's more than possible. And, um, you know, we started getting tested early, and, and that's where our brotherhood, this foundation, you know, it just kept growing. And when I say this, it's not just 11 or 23. It's, uh, it's so beautiful to see how our country has come together around this, and that's the only way that this was possible. Um, it's been a long road, uh, a tough road, a lot of windows with a lot of traveling, With, but that's also one thing is that this group doesn't look for excuses. Um, it's such a fulfilling time for our country, such a, a beautiful, exciting time for our country, and looking back at it now, was it tough? Definitely. Uh, you know, having to compete just to get to the octagon, and then in the octagon, you know, that long stretch uh, versus teams that, that are used to doing this uh, and, and finishing first on top of that, of CONCACAF, it shows a lot about this group, shows a lot about our country. And uh, we're all excited to where this is going. We know where we stand. Um, 
but it's been a definitely a long road, uh, but one that's so worth it. And it's so beautiful to see how soccer has grown in our country and to see where we are, where we were, where we are, and definitely where we want to take this. When you do make it back to BMO, it, it's going to be like an anniversary of sorts of qualifying for the World Cup in front of a brilliant atmosphere, a brilliant crowd. And as the sideline reporter, I get the luxury of lingering around post-match after the home games that were there. And one of my favorite memories is seeing maybe the world's smallest, but most adorable Stephen Vittoria jersey on the pitch afterwards, the little one just kicking about. Just When you think about what those memories were like at BMO, um, especially qualifying, but having your family there, just what, what is that going to mean to you when you decide that this is it for me and I'm going to hang up my boots? No, we're getting a little ahead of ourselves, I, I believe. Um, it's, you know, I like taking it uh, one day at a time, one camp at a time. Uh, it's always special. Um, obviously, we don't want to get ahead of ourselves. We have a really important and tough game tomorrow here in Curaçao. But we're definitely looking forward to to coming back to BMO, to coming back to our home soil, to counting on our fans because, uh, you know, we definitely feed off that energy. But it's always special. It's always special. Uh, you know, to have uh, our families with us um, and having that chance to, to bring them onto the field whenever we can. Uh, that's also what this is about. Um, definitely excited, looking forward to Tuesday, but we want to we wanna arrive with, with another three points uh, under our belt, and, and that's our focus. And then when the time comes to enjoy, uh, but we don't want to get ahead of ourselves, we've got to deserve that enjoyment first. Okay, fair enough. I respect that. You, that's that's a soccer player's answer when it's the media person asking the question. No, but it's, it's a truth. It's a, it's a, it's a truth. I get it, but it's it's how I genuinely feel. It's the mentality that we have here in our group too. Uh, you know, I think that's that's one of our strengths too. It's not getting ahead of ourselves. Uh, we know tomorrow's not going to be easy. Uh, you know, and there's no point in focusing on Honduras if we don't get a result tomorrow. Yeah, 100%. And so to that then, on the present, um, you have uh, suspensions to deal with tomorrow, Curacao. You have Alistair Johnson, who's become the, that pit bull fireball on the pitch um, that has been tough to take out with the records he's set for the program, consecutive starts. John gets his suspension from the red card as well. But then in the, the camp at large, you have all of these young players coming in and challenging what had been relatively unchallenged players for the longest time. And you think to your position, Stephen, too, with Kyle Hebert coming in, Dominic Sator, whether it's the World Cup with Lucas McNaughton and Joel Waterman, the, the youth in the positions that perhaps Canada wasn't always the deepest at. How has that changed the camp and your experience with this injection of fresh young talent into the team? Of course, uh, it's important. It's uh, very important, uh, and it's a really good sign uh because we know that this is not just 11 or 23 or 30 and it's nice to see the younger kids coming through to to have that opportunity as well um you know and, and getting that chance to to create some more bonds uh you know and just strengthen strengthen our group strengthen uh our team uh it's special it's special of course for them but it's special for for our group when we have that healthy competition within our Within ourselves, uh, you spoke about Ali. Of course, that's a it's a big name that, that we're gonna miss. But uh, when we speak about our brotherhood, that's also what this is. You know, in moments like this, we we pick each other up. You know, it's kind of like that next man up, and you know, we're here to, to help and to prepare uh, whoever's gonna will be there. Uh, so we we get the most important thing done, which is uh, another win, uh, regardless of, of who steps on the field. So I'm going to ask you, Stephen, if you would, to put on your your pundit hat for a moment then. So you get Dominic Sator and Kyle Hebert in for the very first time at their position, and that's one that you know very familiarly. For the, for the Canadian supporters that are still getting to know them, what is the brief scouting report on what these two guys can offer the team and, and how you've noticed their integration in, into the camp here? Yeah, I'm not going to... To, to be fair and honest, I'm not going to get in, in the tactics, uh, but one thing I can guarantee, it's two dedicated uh, guys that, that have come in that uh, are willing to, to sweat, willing to work, uh, you know, for, for the better of our country. And it, when it's like that, it, it's great to see. It's, it's great to, to strengthen up our team, and uh, I'm sure when their opportunity comes, uh, they're here for a reason. Uh, and when their opportunity also comes, uh, they'll be more than prepared. Uh, but we definitely have a, 
another two players that have the right attitude, that right mindset to to push uh, and to, to keep growing. And that's what this group's about. And, and that's what we want our country to, to be more and more. So it's it's nice to see that young blood, uh, but the, the, right, the right mindset and the right attitude for sure. As you rightfully mentioned, going to Qatar and, and having that experience was was a, a big moment, not just for the players, but for Canada. And it, it seemed to a lot of people, especially that first match, and that's not to discount the second or third group stage matches, but in that first match when Canada was still so unknown to so many people, so many nations, um, that you put in that performance. And, and it was almost like as soon as the full-time whistle blew, Stephen, that the expectations for the team completely changed from this unknown commodity to a threat. D- did you view you and your teammates as a threat in CONCACAF as you should be one of, if not the favorites for Gold Cups for Nations League. That the expectation now is to win trophies. That's fair. Uh, that's fair. I, you know, I agree with you with that whole World Cup um, experience. Obviously, you know, the sports made of wins. Uh, but I think we showed the world, you know, and I still get that feedback, and it's really fulfilling, you know, even in my situation in Portugal, you know, like having people in the league, the the refs and directors, you know, congratulating. Me on behalf of Canada, you know, like, wow, you guys surprised the world. You know, we went head to head with, you know, ranked number two vice champions of the world. The two teams that came out went to the semifinals. You know, we put on a, an honest fight. Uh, you know, we were that close. Uh, we were that close. Um, you know, we want to, we know where we stand. Like I mentioned, we come out of that World Cup a lot stronger. Uh, and I don't think I need to be saying that. We come out a lot stronger than when we went in. And what we want to do now is attach to, to the majority of our performances uh, points. And now we have an opportunity in Nations League and in the Gold Cup uh, starting this new cycle. Uh, it's an exciting time and that's, that's the next step for, that, for this team. It's finding a way to, to transform these, these strong performances with points, no matter who it's against. Always respecting our opponents, like we did with, with Belgium and the world's best. Uh, but that didn't happen. It was a surprise for the world, but it wasn't a surprise for for who's been following this team closely. But like I said, there's no comfort zones here. There's no, uh, you know, getting overexcited with what we did. Now the excitement turns to, to our present and to our near future. And this cycle with these opportunities with Nations League and World Cup. And definitely to, to touch wins and points and, and if we can, trophies to, to this group. I... I that's the road that we want to be on, and I genuinely feel that that's the road we're on. I only have you for a couple more minutes, so I'll leave you with two questions. The first might be uh, an interesting one to, to revisit, but I know everyone who heard O Canada before Belgium and seeing the, the players on the pitch at the World Cup had some kind of emotional moment to it, if they're connected to this team at all. What was going through your mind when O Canada was playing in Qatar? That's a tough one. Uh, that's a tough one. It's just... Um, a fulfilling, a fulfilling feeling, uh, an honor to, to represent our country at that stage, the the world's biggest sports stage. Uh, you know, and like when I kind of, and I speak personally, when I kind of step back and embrace what's going on, it, it takes me quickly back to, you mentioned the kids on the field, it takes me back to when I used to do that and my dreams would be very distant, uh, you know, the Portugal, Brazil's. Now the kids can dream. Canadian kids can dream at home. This dream happened at home, you know. And uh, you know we're between World Cups, uh, so that's just all those emotions. You know, thinking of a dream is coming true, and you're paving the way to prove that a lot of kids can dream because their dreams can come true. Because we did it. We finished top of Concacaf to get it to that stage, and then being there it was just like that mix of fulfillment, but also responsibility of you know now making a name for ourselves at the highest level and wanting to win at that highest level. And I, I, I know that we took steady, healthy steps towards where we want to take this, this team in the near future. See, this is how we know Steve Vittori is good at the media thing because he gave me such a good answer to that question that I'm not going to have to bug him with one more. Steven, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. Reminder to all, Saturday, the first match at Curacao. Match Day Live begins at 6.30 p.m. Mountain, 10 p.m. in Newfoundland and Labrador. You can catch Steven Vittoria and the guys in Curacao and then back at BMO Field on Tuesday versus Honduras. Steven, thank you again. All the best this window and moving on here with this men's national team. 
Thank you so much. Pleasure's all mine and uh, take care.